So here's one of the key things I wanted to mention is that I believe one of the fundamental things that everybody should consider is focusing on one niche. And why do I say that? Because what I'm, uh, what we're able to do with Get You Wired is we'll be able to take the campaigns that have worked in one market and bring them to another market and then another market that are non-competitive. So I've been able to scale a lot of the successful campaigns that we've done with one client in our sandbox and then leverage that to other uh, non-competitive markets. Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome to the Cabin Signal today. I'm super excited to have my friend and business partner and client and everything but lover, Michael King, on the call with me. Dobbin Buck here from Get You Wired, not coming to you from the Get You Wired cabin headquarters in, in North Georgia, but from my home in North Georgia, because all of us are COVID hiding and um, working from home and all of that stuff. So it's an extra yeah. special pleasure for me to be able to connect with my buddy. You know, we're going to be talking about some stuff for you, but I tell you what, it's just a joy to be able to connect with this man. And we're going to be talking about marketing strategy today. We're going to be talking about methodology that Michael, who is a master visionary, a master marketer by my approximation, that, uh, we have been able to, and Michael has been able to successfully move the needle for a number of different businesses in regards to top of funnel methodology, conversion methodology, funnel methodology, um, appointment scheduling, the full spectrum of, of life cycle marketing for um, small businesses. So we're going to be taking a peek and diving deep into repeatable structures for success in today's digital marketing. And Michael, I'm so excited to have you today. Wow, I, uh, we just stop right there. That was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kinda, it's great because I, I, I have stayed at your house, so I feel like, feel like we're just sitting in your living room jamming out here. This is great. <laughs> All we need to do is go out and go fishing. <laughs> yeah, can, can, we, can we quickly, I know we don't have a lot of time here, but can, can, can we quickly tell them the story of your last trip here? Uh, well, first of all, uh, I, if you haven't had the opportunity to ever go to the cabin, I highly recommend it. It was just a wonderful, glorious trip. Uh, uh, Dobbin just, you know, did everything right. Uh, what was great is that the fondest memory was uh, Dobbin and I. Dobbin takes me on, you know, some hike in the woods and we're, 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 we're driving up and we park the car and we, we see these guys that are over there and they look kind of like we're supposed to go walking behind their cabin, but they looked a little sketchy. So we kind of walk uh, across a bridge and then little do we know a couple minutes later we hear gunshots so you know being able to get shot at uh, in Georgia uh, that, that definitely solidifies the bond and then we got lost in the mountains for I don't know an hour or two but uh, that's what brothers are all about man it was a good time it was a lot of fun no injuries yeah, it's always high adventure with Michael King I assure you it had nothing to do with Georgia and the mountains <laughs> He draws high adventure to him, whether you're in Georgia or New York City or Washington, D.C. or San Diego yeah. or wherever oh, we yeah. run into each other. Some things happen, you know. Always some hullabaloo and tomfoolery for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so great. Well, honored to have you, Michael. And, um, yeah. and I think that there's a lot of value here. So the small business owners that are um, watching this, following it on our newsletter, The Cabin Signal, um, you know, they're, they're all, all of us, both of us, we're all trying to up our game. We're trying to get our messaging out. We're trying to, you know, to reach our audiences, to give them awareness and to really serve them with the best possible direction and information, which dictates whether or not they would be viable clientele for us and where to go from there and making that process seamless and easy and comfortable and aesthetically pleasing and professional that's a lot to do with you know with marketing but that, that's really the dream and the ideal and you're one of the people that have absolutely accomplished that we've been working together for many years now i don't even know how many years seven or eight years seven or eight like years i mean seven or eight yeah. glorious years <laughs> yeah yeah seven or eight glorious years and so um I've just always been amazed at your vision 
an understanding of what is needed to move people from one thing to the next, from everything from marketing and then it goes onwards into operational efficiencies that are an extension of the marketing that yeah. um, you're really an expert at. Um, where can we start? Where can we start breaking some of this down for our audience? Yeah, maybe maybe a good place is just to give a, a, a quick background uh, to give some context and to kind of talk a little bit about my journey. And then from there, we can kind of pivot and go where we like. How does that sound? Sounds and, and I think to your point, uh, whether you are a small service based business or if you are an agency and you have a lot of different clients and you're looking for a way to maybe niche down, uh, I, I, th I think that you're going to get a lot of value out of this. And so my background real quick. Uh, you know, I'm a proud Canadian, but I'm also a dual citizen in the United States, grew up in a large family, traveled the world for four years and decided, you know, uh, after doing all that backpacking, I went and worked for Tony Robbins. Uh, after that, I then worked with my brother, Dr. Joseph King, who is an ophthalmologist. And you, you name it, I've done it inside a clinic. So I've worked inside a medical clinic for 12 years. I've, you know, done reception. I've managed a call center. I've counseled thousands of patients. I've worked in the operating room. I've worked as his VP of marketing. So I really got to see that holistic view, not just of like how to get a patient to raise their hand and say, I'm interested, but how to be able to bring them from that point all the way through to being a happy uh, patient and a referring patient and a, you know, giving a, a, a solid review. And what I realized, you know, several years ago, uh, or actually if I want to back up a little bit in like 2013, I really started getting into digital marketing and, you know, attending everything from Infusionsoft's yearly conference, uh, and then uh, a, a very uh, strong influence on, on me has been Ryan Dice and the team at Digital Marketer, who I, I know that uh, we've got good vibes about. Uh, and I really just, I've always been a learner. I've always been somebody that wants to um, optimize uh, what it is that I'm doing and be better at it every single day. And so what I also realized, uh, you know, so when I decided to open up my agency, and here's a key experience is that. I started by, I was like, you know what, I'm tired of working in this space. I want to get out and open up my own company, but I want to do it where um, maybe I want to try a variety of different industries. And I picked up a client that was a real estate investor. And I was like, oh my gosh, like as soon as I started to try the work, I'm like, I've got to learn who the players are, what works, what converts, what landing pages are good, all that sort of unpaid time. I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to do this because it, I, I, I didn't fail. I, I, I delivered the, the, the project to him, but I realized I can't scale this. And so what I realized, and everybody was saying to me, Michael, why don't you try to build out a system in the ophthalmology space or in the electromedical space? And I didn't listen to it for a few years. And fast forward to, you know, I thought to myself, like, you know, we built all this stuff out. And, I, and 2013 has been when we started working with Get You Wired. We built all these really cool integrations, very complex stuff with the API of, of uh, Appointment Plus and Infusionsoft and landing pages and just all the, the nurture sequences, just really, really in depth. And, but what I, I never did is I never leveraged that. So here's one of the key things I wanted to mention is that I believe one of the fundamental things that everybody should consider is focusing on one niche. And why do I say that? Because what, I'm, uh, what we're able to do with Get You Wired is we'll be able to take the campaigns that have worked in one market and bring them to another market and then another market that are non-competitive. So I've been able to scale a lot of the successful campaigns that we've done with one client in our sandbox and then leverage that to other uh, non-competitive markets. The other benefit is you get all the data that what works in market A can then try it out in market B. So I think the journey that I've been on with Get You Wired has been Let's, let's make it successful. I, we made it successful in my brother's uh, company and it worked. And I finally, you know, I tried one client outside of this industry. I'm like, what the heck am I doing? Let's build a system. This is where we partnered together as I then was able to then take that to all, you know, clients around the United States and, and, and in Canada. So, so that's kind of like it in a nutshell is been, you know, I, I believe that by focusing on one niche, you can get really deep. I, I, I call it an inch wide and a mile deep where you can get so in depth on how to remain relevant, set up those retainers for your clients or to be able to have an offering that allows you to constantly be ahead of the game. And if you're trying to focus on a wide variety of niches to work in, it's really difficult to scale that. So um, that's my, one of the, the final point, and I'll bounce it back to you, is that by working with Get You Wired, it has enabled me to scale a, a system that, that my clients can now then grow their volume predictably and consistently 
because we built that all these different funnels out and just I, I don't have to spend my time worrying about what works uh, in five or ten different niches I focus on the elective medical space specifically in, in laser eye surgery uh, and that has enabled me to grow and scale this and to set up those those high value retainers so that's it in a nutshell but I'd, I'd love to kind of you know, go wherever we want from this one that's great. Well, you know, and, and another thing that's really interesting is that we've not only niched with your, you know, incredible tech marketing stack that we've we've created together, but it's a niche within a niche. You yeah. know, this is even more refined with with you know where we've been we've been really successful because there's ophthalmology. But then there's LASIK within ophthalmology, which is yeah. even more fine-tuned, more specific. And so in regards to marketing, as far as your, your ad spend, your targeting, how we're able to, you know, how we're able to, to reach our audiences, and then the messaging that's specific to how we're able to convert them, overcoming their fears of the LASIK surgery, overcoming their concerns with the pricing. Et cetera, et cetera, all the things that make us uneasy about something that we could really benefit from are all answered in that process. So it's even it's even more refined. And so this is one thing to to you know one of many things to take away from this is that within the scope of your current services or your current products, you know many people even in their own marketing and their own vision are generalizing too much and expecting yeah. that people people will self align and segment and drill down to what they need. People are moving so fast and the way they look at social media and the way they look at marketing and everything like that, we really need to help and do that for them. And you've done that exceedingly well, Michael. Well, thank you. And what I would say is that I've also built my agency where I personally don't have much interest in growing a large agency where I've got, 15, 20, 40, 50 people that are working with me, um, my impact is more on the one-to-many scale. So to, in order for me to be able to, ha to, to, to do the implementation side, that's where partner partnering with people like Get You Wired, and I've got a, a, a good list of other uh, people that I've been able to work with, that enables me to know, like, I don't want to be the world's best person at SEO, but what I do want to do is work with people that are, right? Yeah. I don't necessarily want to be the best in the world at knowing how to set up things in Infusionsoft, but I will work with one of the best people in the world, a la Get You Wired, right? So that's my mindset is, and I, and I think that's one thing I, got, I really got from Tony Robbins is a modeling behavior of people that are already successful. So if somebody has already achieved a result that I want, that's the person I want to work to work with. So I, I submit my ego and, and I come at it with total humility because I, if I can get my clients a better result, why do I need to try to be all things to all people? What I want to be, they're after a specific outcome. And if I'm just a hammer in search of a nail, right, then if I'm only offering paid traffic or if I'm only offering SEO, the reality is, is that if I'm just getting a client a lead and I'm not helping them see it all the way through to being a actual referring, you know, a, a client and then a referring person and reviewing, reviewing, reviewing person, I'm not doing my full job, right? So I look at it as I have this fiduciary responsibility to look at the full funnel, to look at the entire business structure. And that's where I think having that, you know, decade plus of time working inside a service-based business has helped me to see that it's not enough to just offer a singular service. People are after a result and a lead is not a result. Revenue is a result. And so I think that by, you know, you can accelerate your ability to get those results. You don't have to specifically be the person to provide those results. You can partner with people and figure out a rev split also on the back end. So the last point I'll say is I personally don't do any paid traffic um, management, but I have partnered with world-class vendors to do that for my clients. And I think that's a bit of a paradigm shift, especially now in the era that we are in, where, where people need to, you know, a lot of us are now working at home and kind of doing our thing. Partnering with other people is now the best time that you can, it, it's the best time to do that. So I, I think that you can get a phenomenal result for somebody without having to be the person to do all the work. And I think that's a, that's a shift in mindset. I'd, I'd love to, it's not for everybody, 
but I think for some people it really can work. So that way you don't have to stop and, you know, and try to figure this all out yourself. The last thing I'll mention Dobbin is that by being in a niche, it has enabled me to strategically partner with the people that already have the clientele that I want. Case in point right. right after. So when, when COVID hit, I went and partnered with another uh, uh, agency uh, that's a friend of mine out of the UK. We don't have any competing clients and we put on a webinar uh, to help people through COVID, to help ophthalmologists through COVID. We had 500 or something people that were on it. And we now have a group of, uh, of, of, of ophthalmology practices from all around the world that are now taking part in an eight week program for us. Did zero advertising for that. But what I did is I leveraged the relationships that he has with practices that I don't have. Same thing like partnering with someone like a Johnson & Johnson where they have access to all the clientele that I want. So how can I help them to solve a problem by giving them value that they can then expose me to their clientele? And so I think that mindset shift of when you niche down, that's where you can strategically partner with other people to get results that you want. So I know there's a lot wrapped in there, but um, I'd love to hear how that, bounce, how that resonates with you. Yeah, I mean, it's so smart, you know, and, and there's two things that are going on here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that Michael's talking about taking effective strategies and things that, I mean, when I say someone has worked tirelessly on making something work very effectively, it's Michael King and the LASIK marketing strategy that we started working on back with uh, his brother's multiple locations. Um, that has been refined, that became successful. And then what Michael has done is made that available to other non-competing LASIK practices. So if you have developed something already, maybe you've already spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and been through four or five agencies and trial and error and this and that, and you've actually came to something that works, well, you really probably have something really valuable, okay? Yes. And it may be valuable to you, but imagine how valuable it would be to someone else that doesn't have the inertia, the drive, the understanding, doesn't want to go through the learning curve, and all the trial and error of gathering data and making decisions based on that. You can jumpstart them with your strategies years ahead of where they could be them going to an agency and different service providers and all of this stuff yeah because you've already figured it out and part of the beauty of, of our partnership is that we're part of the solution to that and we've been able we actually helped to develop the system with michael and everything from the start so that's very helpful but if you have ideas and, and especially if you have reach into your own niche market, your own vertical and everything, there's a lot of opportunity to help a lot of people. And there's a lot of opportunity to make a lot of money, you know, and while helping a lot of people. So in alignment with your own personal values and, and, uh, and maybe that's not the business that you want to get in. But the other thing about partnering with an agency like get you wired that has the capacity to do that is that you can dictate that, they fulfill to whatever level that you don't want to deal with. So yeah. Michael is actually pretty hands-on with his clients because he's reviewing information. He's puts a lot of effort into the relationship, but the nuts and bolts and the grind of the deal really falls on a few people from my team on a month to month basis. And, and that takes a lot of the heat off of him and it allows him to be the hip slick and cool dude that he is providing great information <laughs> and, and value. And, you know, and all of that. So it's something to consider um, in regards to what we're talking about. It's one thing is, hey, niche down with, with, with your marketing focus, refine your marketing, make it laser focused, understand the customer life cycle, the journey, and make your plan and surround yourself with talent that knows what they're doing each step of the way. At the beginning, that may be a little bit more costly. Would you say, Michael, working with the best people is t traditionally, you know, uh, on an economy is generally a little bit more expensive than working with the average Joe? I would agree. Uh, but I think the, the, you actually have more risk, I think, by not working with somebody of high quality because 
Uh, and that's very much something that I've, you know, again, going back to Tony, but also learned through Jay Abraham is the, the, the idea of finding the people that have achieved that result and leveraging what they know to, to, uh, to, the, to the mutual benefit. So if you have niched down, that's how you can be able to attract those high quality people because what do they want to, uh, somebody that is a world-class vendor would love to do, would, would love to create something once and then also be able to be able to scale that, right? right? Nobody really wants to try to have to, you know, bake a brand new cake every single day and do it from scratch, right? right. Like it, it, so I think that I, I have a, sort of the benefit that, that I have is by exposing my clients to high quality vendors. And it's, again, these, the, the practices that I think can afford working with the high quality uh, vendors you know, are going to be doing five or $10 million and above. Right. So right. I, I think that that's, that's one of the caveats is that if you're doing, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars in revenue in a service-based business, it's very difficult to get the, the, the uh, implementation done from a high quality vendor um, it, it, at scale. Right. What, what yeah. I would say though, is for you can, you can be able to work with the right types of businesses want to have that edge, want to work with people that can get them a result faster. So, you're actually mitigating your risk by working with somebody who can get you the result faster. Speed of implementation is the name of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Incredible. Yeah, the, um, and, and I run into this as an agency, you know, I'm selecting who's going to do what and everything. And, and always when I go to the top of the heap, I get the results that I'm looking for. And bring, going back to what you originally said, results, results are everything. If we aren't getting results, then our, you know, other than maybe there's an uh, implication of educational value to our mistakes. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That, that, that has value. But, you know, I think I've experienced enough of that that I, I, I tend to want to to gravitate towards, uh, you know, making the right investments. Uh, initially choosing my team, building my teams, and, you know, moving forward with a quality product. Ultimately, at the end of the day, when we do things right, the money ceases to become an issue anyway. When things yeah. are done right and they're working effectively in, in marketing, it, 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 it ceases to be an issue. It's in that unknown zone of getting something started or something new and everything that, that fear is, uh, you know, you know, fear, where fear lives for most small businesses. Well, and to that point, Dobbin, is that one of the challenges, if you aren't, if you are not narrow in your, who you're, who you're trying to serve, if you haven't niched down, then you're spending a lot of that time, as I mentioned earlier, trying to figure it out. So you want to fail as like, I, I'm a huge believer in failing. Like I, I fail every single day. I want to fail, but fail forward and fail quickly. And if you are trying to figure shit out and you're trying, Hey, I got to figure it out for client a and I got to figure it out for client B and C and D and E it's just different problems, right? Like I'd, I'd rather figure it out for niche a, and then how do I, how do I get further down that, 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 that optimization trail to keep giving those incremental improvements that I can then scale to all of our clients. Right. That, and that's yeah. the key is that if you're, if you're optimizing. So, you know, one of the things that we worked on with get you wired is having an optimization schedule for our clients because to maintain those retainers long term especially higher value retainers it can't just be a, no, nothing in marketing is set it and forget it the, the the speed that all this stuff pivots and moves and changes that's why i don't want to try to be an expert in all these different spaces i want to align myself with people who are the best in the world at like facebook so we, we were working on a funnel with molly Pittman, and she's you know we've got amazing results with at, at king lasik for it um, I'll work with on the paid traffic side, Mike Rhodes team, uh, shout out to web savvy on doing the paid traffic. Right. So, cause I want world-class vendors doing that type of stuff. Right. Like, and I think, you know, I'll look at how to be able to architect funnels with Ollie Bilson. So like I'm, I'm looking at who are the best in the world in my estimation. And a lot of this came from digital marketer and traffic and conversion summit and all the rest of it, but who are the people that are the best of the best of the best. And, by me having a opportunity that's in one narrow niche that is, has high value clients going to people like that and exposing them to an opportunity of, Hey, let's figure this out once, but look at all these other practices that need this successful funnel that we built. And that is a bit of a mindset shift. I think for people 
But for those of you that have either have one successful client or maybe you um, are a successful uh, practice or, or business yourself, you have assets to what Dobbin said earlier that you can leverage that is of value. If you spent all this time and energy building something out, you can be able to take that and bring that to other non-competitive spaces. And so it's just to me, I really am such a believer in narrow focus, but man, oh man, by when narrowing your focus, it allows me to get so deep on, 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 on how optimized I can make stuff for my clients. Cause I'm not trying to figure it out from square one every single day. You know, it's, it's every day I want to improve, but I'm not, I'm improving something that I've already built. Does that make sense? Like I'm, I'm not trying to like figure it all out from scratch. Yeah, absolutely. I completely get it. I completely agree with everything. You know, um, we've got a few minutes. Could we possibly, um, so we've been talking a little, we've been sharing some, some intel on thinking structure and, and, and how we look at this type of marketing. Maybe we could just break down what we're talking about. So, and what I mean by that, Michael, is, um, yes. you know, we're doing, you know, this type of top of funnel movement we're driving it to this type of you know uh this type of landing page the thought process between that landing page is this when people go here then they can schedule an appointment here just to give them a bit of the model that we're talking about in regards to in particular what we've done with um with our lasik product yeah, uh, mind if i share my screen oh great yeah I mean, uh, uh let me make sure i'm on the right page there we go all right so just give me a second share screen awesome okay all right can you i'll just start out actually with uh king lasik right here okay so this is probably a pretty good example of uh uh what, what you know what we what we do with our clients and so this structure, uh, if you haven't taken a uh, digital marketer sort of like, uh, you know, creating a high converting homepage, it's a great course, but um, I'll show you sort of like, the, I'll, I'll talk through the methodology of what we built because this is indicative of all the clients that we've got. Uh, and so one of the things that, that, that we've looked at is how can you um, reduce friction in the buying process for uh, prospective patients? And so one of the things we also looked at is like, well, what are the, some of the highest searches right now that happen in laser vision correction? They all revolve around pricing. So we kind of right there, we have a little pricing funnel. That's one of the, um, where, where somebody, if they want to, uh, to be able to download our, our pricing information, they can kind of get it right there. Um, other things that we built out with Get You Wired, uh, we have our little self-test. And so uh, we have tested various different self-tests. Uh, this one we built on Infusionsoft works really great kind of bring people through and ask them, you know, what type of uh, lenses we wear. I, I'm not going to go through all of it, but it, but it asks these different questions. This is one of the highest converting tools that we have is a self test. That's more on the top of funnel because we're realizing that not everybody that comes to our client's um, website wants to schedule right away or wants to, to, to convert. So we use a self test as a way to do that. The other thing that we've added on uh, would be, uh, things like uh, offering virtual consultations. And so uh, we've embedded, uh, you know, uh, Calendly here right now. So if you aren't currently offering virtual consultations, I strongly believe that you need to do that. Uh, this is something that, uh, that, that we've been able to launch for all of our clients. Um, uh, other things, there was a little pop-up that came up. Uh, excellent intent. Uh, then we've got, okay, okay, great. We're now on that journey. So, so if they come through here and, you know, they're wanting, we, we created a really super high, uh, uh, high, high value, I think, uh, guide here for people. So if they wanted to, to know, well, what exactly is LASIK? There's a video from, from the surgeon talking about the benefits of contacts over LASIK. So we create this content knowing full well that not everybody's going to convert right away, but we design this stuff. Uh, you know, we've got uh, uh, a checklist here, which is an infographic. We've got, you know, um, chat bots. Uh, you know, we've got, how do I know if I'm a candidate? Great. You got to you know, schedule a consult. Uh, and then we got part two, which I'll show you real quick. So these are assets that we built out for our clients. So I built them once for King LASIK, and then I've been able to leverage these to other clients as well. That's the other, going back to what I mentioned earlier. So now if I'm thinking through, if somebody is in the first part of their journey, they're kind of wanting to know more about the procedure. Is it right for me? A little bit more research. 
Now this is where they're more in the, e, you know, they're in the evaluation phase. Is this the right procedure for me? So we go awareness to evaluation. So now we're kind of looking at, well, here's the things we cover here. How do I pick the right practice? What's the cost? What's my experience going to be like? So we go through here. Here's another one from the surgeon. Um, and I strongly recommend more video. If you don't have a lot of video on your site, on your client site, you definitely want to have it. Uh, so we kind of go through here, share our online reputation. So we're leveraging social proof. Um, we have, uh, you know, what's the cost of LASIK? So, you know, you know blah, 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 information about uh, financing packages. Uh, then we have an office tour. So this is like what it's like um, on the day of, you know, the procedure, what it looks like in our office. Why do we do this? Because it accelerates trust and it gives people uh, that opportunity to, to be able to meet the doctor, right? Um, and then this is what happens during the procedure, uh, post-procedure care. Uh, I'm kind of blasting through this because I, I want to respect people's time. But um, what I'm going to show here is the approach of taking into account that this is a journey that people are on and you want to be their guide. That's probably the most important thing I could, I could uh, instill into everybody, hopefully, uh, is that they are the Luke Skywalker uh, and we're the Yoda. You know, that's very much from <laughs> Donald Miller at StoryBrand that I learned that, uh, you know, four or five years ago at uh, one of DM's events. But to me, most practices, and here's one of the fundamental um, mistakes that they make, Dobbin, is that they position themselves as the hero. Most practices talk about how many procedures they've done, how, um, you know, how, uh, where they've got their doctorate, uh, you know, just how many awards have they had. <laughs> give a shit. They really don't. They care about, can you help me get a result? So that's why we, you know, we're, we're talking about their journey right here, right? You could use the word journey. You know, we give that information about the procedure. Again, you can see all the video. Again, going back to the journey, here's the steps you need to take. Uh, you know, step one, step two, step three. Here's where we carve out our avatars. Uh, and, you know, these are the types of people that we want to attract. The outdoor adventurers, the, the busy professionals, the super moms and super dads as the cutest little baby right there. Um, and we have reviews right there. Uh, we talk about financing. My brother does his story. And so that's the sort of like the way that we built it out for our, um, for our, uh, our clients. Um, one other quick thing I wanted to mention, uh, and so the, here's, here's one of our, uh, um, our, our clients that we kind of took the, the, the essence of what we liked on, on King LASIK. We built out a LASIK specific page. So you can see, same thing, we have the self-test, uh, schedule online. Uh, and what's cool here is that I do all the videos for my clients because it's hard to get a practice to be comfortable on video, right? And so in order for me to be able to rapidly implement, I create a lot of videos for these practices that we can then leverage uh, on all these different assets that we've got. And so you can see there's a similar feel. We have the you know, patient guides, you know, what is LASIK? But this page here, uh, we've been able to leverage this and, you know, adjust the branding and whatnot for all our other clients. So this is an asset that we can be able to replicate. Uh, there's a wonderful surgeon, Dr. Gary Fillmore. Um, and so I, I think that this kind of gives you a little bit of a sneak peek behind the scenes, you know, of, of how we built it out. So it's like uh, we, we looked at and we, we were leveraging the success that has happened at one client and built that into a system that we then bring to other ones. So that's a bit of an overview right there, Dobbin. Um, anything yeah. you want me to uh, dig deeper on? Yeah, and so it's a really full spectrum offering. And here's something to pay attention to. So structurally, all of the landing pages, all of the materials have been split test. I mean, yes. to, to death, you know, like Michael mm -hmm. King uh, is like, has no limits to the how much he'll look at data and tweak things around and, and, and do things, I promise you. And so the results that these people are getting automatically are through like a, a lot, basically a lot of effort. But the thing that you look through, and he mentioned uh, Donald Miller and StoryBrand, but the language, first of all, we understand our customer inside yes. and out. We understand every fear, every objection, every concern, and every desire that surrounds these personas. And all the content is laser focused and very specific to speak 
to those dreams or those concerns in a very organized manner. So a lot of time and a lot of effort has been put into the specific, not only just the content, but the placement of the content and the segment of the individuals based on as they go through our finals, as they're going through it, what you're not seeing behind the scenes is there's uh, a lot of different automation that based on them yes. taking the self-test, we're able to understand, you know, where their fears are, where their interests are, their benefits they're looking for are, and then the language that starts coming back to them everywhere is hyper-tuned to their specific needs. So really, like, it's very difficult to take that in with having them show you a, a few pages, but like, yeah. if you're thinking about your marketing, you know, going through these types of efforts, the content and the build out of understanding your client and the language in this, I mean, it's, it's equal, Michael, would you agree that it's equal in proportion to the design and framework and to the technology oh, yeah. stack that goes behind it? I, I would. I, I think understanding the difference between strategy and implementation is key. And strategy, I think, is what really can move the dial. Um, I'm, I implement like a madman, but I also want people that are uh, exceptional at implementing in areas where I'm not an expert or really, frankly, where I don't want to be an expert. That's where it's more important for me, for my client to get a result quicker than it is for me to try to like control everything and do everything under the sun from SEO to Infusionsoft to landing page design to video editing to you name it, right? What, what I, it's, I just don't, I don't have the, the appetite for that. But I, I think for me is knowing if you, once you know what needs to happen, the speed at which you can make that happen is, is what's incredibly important. Not just because ideas sitting in your head and not taking action in the real world, it's not doing anybody any good. And the benefit again of being narrow in your focus is it allows you to rapidly implement and then to scale that implementation that's worked. And then to iterate faster because you've got multiple data points across a wide variety of industries. You're not a wide variety of markets, rather. You're not trying to figure it all out for like, okay, why isn't this working for this one client here? And you have nobody else to kind of, you know, leverage data from. So I like to split test things in a variety of different markets because I have that ability now because I'm narrowing my focus. Well. Wow obviously doing amazing things well we're really at the top of the hour here michael i appreciate you coming in you know one thing that um one resource that you all watching as as you're listening to michael and myself and you may be thinking to yourself hey you know i've got i've got some great ideas or or you know in my vertical or in my niche you know i think that i could i could really um uh, I could really develop something that could help a lot of people, or I've already developed something that could really help some people, but I just don't know how to get it off the ground. So Michael and I, from time, time and time again, have consulted together other people that are interested in gaining some vision around, um, you know, how should I build out a full spectrum package that I can then resell to people in my, in my vertical. And then also where I come in is on the, deliverables, you know, the onboarding, the implementation, the training, the help desk uh, services, and, and, the, and the build out of the, you know, of the master, you know, sandbox and things that we work from in these, um, in these instances. So if you're interested in, um, in reaching out, of course, I'm Dobbin Buck, you can reach out to me through uh, Get You Wired directly. I'm very easy to get a hold of. And, and Michael, how can people reach out to you and, and get in touch with you? Do you want people to reach out to you? <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on LinkedIn, Michael at LasikMarketingAgency.com. Uh, you know, if you want to uh, have a chance to connect with Dobbin and I, you know, reach out to Dobbin and he'll, he'll connect. Uh, he's got my cell phone. You know, I, I'm a very approachable person. And the other one, one quick thing I want to mention is that even if you don't, um, uh, even if you aren't uh, in a niche right now, you haven't narrowed your focus, there are other people that are in a niche that maybe don't have the skill set that you do. So don't limit yourself to thinking like, like maybe I don't have all the pieces in place or whatever. There are other people that, that are narrow in their focus, but don't have maybe the digital marketing aspect of it. And so I think that just right now is such an exceptional time to do a, a pivot and to 
be able to narrow your focus because especially during the, you know, the, the, the climate that we're in, I think that uh, having a different uh, approach and, and opening your mind to, to possibility is key. And, you know, you know, it's 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 been such a great time here, Dobbin, to to work along with you and the team at Get You Wired, who I love just tremendously. You guys are awesome. Uh, I hope you found value in this today. Uh, if anything has kind of uh, you know tickled your mind and say yes, I want to kind of maybe have a discovery call or whatever, uh, Dobbin and I are very open to, to to that type of thing as well. So, Dobbin, I'll give you the last word, my friend. Great. Well, thank you once again, Michael. One of my favorite people in the world. Always a pleasure to. To, to hang with you. We were supposed to be going to uh, traffic and, and, and traffic and oh. conversion in San Diego. And we ran it a big Airbnb and we're going to have the party pad and all this stuff. And then boom, the world blew up. So next yeah, year, yeah. or maybe, yeah, and I was, <laughs> and I was supposed to come out to, to see you at the cabin and go to the final four. And uh, man, yeah, but you know, what? Yeah. things happen for reasons. So, uh, you know, on that note, uh, you know, just much gratitude, Dobbin, for, for spending some time with me here today and for every one of you for that's, that's watching as well. So I appreciate it. Now, that's great. Now, if you're all picking this up off of our newsletter, please, you know, watch the videos that we're putting out, three videos, one that is a, a marketing-specific video with our par vendor partners, a um, experience video, which this falls into the category of bringing in top experience from our joint venture partners and our, our clientele, and then a cultural video on each newsletter that shows some of the cultural impact and, and things that we're doing at the, at the fun Get You Wired cabin, as well on our YouTube account for Get You Wired. All of the past month's material is up there so you can see other interviews. So um, please support us, please like us, please follow us. And thank you all for uh, going through this. And thank you once again, Michael, for, for participating. Love you, dude. Appreciate it, man. Likewise.